So I'm gonna record another stream of consciousness. It's early in the morning. I forgot to wash my face last night. I fell asleep on the couch. So I've got mascara and all, all kinds of things. But I was just sitting here looking at my view. Uh, let's see if I can show it to you that way. And it's a little bit colder here. So the mountains of Corfu got a little dusting of snow last night. So that's pretty cool. So just communing, <laughs> communing with, uh, communing with my you know, soul, I always say, or communing with God, just, you know, having a conversation with God. Um, and then I was like, you know, I haven't had my cards out since I left Ukraine and I love divination cards have always brought me comfort just to sit sometimes and just have something in my hands and to shuffle or play with. Um, I don't always like have to get messages from them, but I like playing a little bit sometimes. So I was doing that and I pulled out, um, these cards are kind of cute little cards. And this one says spirit, heavenly assistance from your angels and guides. And, um, and it was so beautiful because that's what was happening in the moment. I was getting my, you know, messages dialed in and tuned in and, um, and then the star of David. And, uh, when I was the biggest story around my name for the longest time was, um, that my the baby book said it was the Hebrew form of David. And I always thought that was really cool because this is the star of David and David was my grandfather. And although I've mentioned on the daily tune-ins that my family was really not, um, not the healthiest emotionally and physically, um, emotionally and mentally, um, there was like the thread of our family. There was some deep love. I, I, I think I had always been able to feel the thread of truth in almost everybody and everything and um, I could see it but what I felt was how how far off it had freed from that that thread right um, so what you know my family like I just I always had it and still do have a very deep love for my family but I think what I've come to notice and, and understand in my you know my years of contemplation is that they had frayed so far from the truth of who they were. So as a collective consciousness of my own family, my biological family, we were very much frayed from who we were um, at the at the truth of who we are. And but um but it reminded me as I was got get some other cards out, these three cards popped out. And one night when we were um, Bud and I were having a dinner in Ukraine and it was again I mean I think every story about Ukraine is like it was a you know a particularly low day and we're like okay let's just go go get dinner at our favorite place and it was like stupid good food for like stupid cheap like it was it was so good and the place was classy and it was just you know it was just very different and it was like one of the only places that was open at night so Bud and I went and um we were sitting there and this man came in and occasionally they like the gypsies would come in and try to sell stuff but they would usher them out and somehow this this um gypsy gentleman came in and he was older and uh, i think he had, he had a limp and he was deaf and and blind like he and because i remember it being like to, after he left i asked my husband i was like hey honey do you do i call him um oh what wait what was the name do I call him deaf? Like, is he deaf and dumb? Is that, was that like politically correct? Like he was all the things he was, you know, and uh, we got to laugh because he's like, babe, you're so bad with like, you know, somebody's disabled. Like, you know, I mean it well, but sometimes I like, I don't know what's politically correct anymore. And I don't want to offend anybody. And I don't want to say words, even if he wasn't there that were offensive that because my experience of this gypsy deaf and dumb guy and I say that with the highest of love so if it's not politically correct um, I apologize it's just I'm ignorant to what 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 is politically correct at this point um, but I'm willing to learn if somebody would let me know the these he came in and he was selling these cards he was selling these cards and I am very very much not religious but I grew up Catholic and I, I'm always at church I felt like and um, but once again, like I could feel the truth of what religion was because I, I know for sure I had a beautiful connection with stories of the angels and of Mary 
I did not at all feel that I knew actually that it was a frayed story that she was a prostitute and this horrible thing. Like I was so drawn um, to uh, Mary Magdalene is who I'm talking about, but also um, the Blessed Mother. Um, how she was depicted felt um, as, you know, felt somewhat truthful. Majority of the things felt truthful. So I was always just really drawn. And so when this guy came in with these cards, they were like laminated little cards of Mary, um, Mary and Jesus. And just basically, you know, there she is again. But what I loved about them is like, they were very ascension-y to me, you know, like ascending into the Christ consciousness. And um, I don't know who this is. I just, I resonated with it. And I felt like I, I um, recognized this angel, but I couldn't quite, I'm wondering if it's Michael. Um, but, uh, the translate thing, when I look at it, doesn't, doesn't use, it doesn't work. So anyway, the truth of, um, Catholicism that, um, I resonated with, I have to be, I'm sitting here so grateful for, because the truth of that was what got me into a place where, you know, when my life fought, fell around, the first thing I I turned to was prayer, you know, to pray. And I remember praying and being like, God, I don't know who you are at this point to me, but like, I've been gone for a while because I think you changed. <laughs> like, I think you're, I think you're much more beautiful than people let on. I th like, I don't feel like I have to fear you, but I feel guilty for not fearing you because I don't know, like, I don't know what to think of you. I feel something so different than what I've been told. So if you exist, like, I kind of need your help. And from that moment on, my life just, it didn't get, like, easy. Uh, it, like, it didn't get easier. It, But it got better and better and better because um, through my connection with God or <clears throat> source, spirit, I, I call all of it, I call it Gus. I'm like, what's up, Gus? You know, God, universe, spirit, you're looking good today. You know, <laughs> I literally will, will have those conversations. My life is a prayer. And as I go, I am, like, talking to God and talking to Gus, talking to my spirit, which is all the same thing. And, you know, even if it's like, oh, like that's, that's an interesting human you've created there. I wonder what that human mission is. Like, can you tune me in so I can maybe get a little bit clearer on why they're here and what they're doing? Cause they're unpleasant, you know? And I like joke, my good creation there, Gus. But um, having that connection with the spirit is, with your spirit, with your God, whatever that is, it is, it is essential right now. Like it is the thing to find because it is the peace. And I will tell you, I have lived way, way far from that peace. I have lived completely frayed in a thousand different directions from my, my spirit. And I'm not claiming to be all the way like one thread at this point. I'm sure I still have some phrase but I am definitely, definitely much more healed and, and braided back together into a much wholer expression of a thread of truth. And I, I will tell you it's worth the work. It is worth the work to be here, to be in this kind of peace and to just allow your life to just be a prayer now, to not have anywhere you need to be, you need to go. It's just walking through your day and pointing out the things that you really like to Gus and the things that you don't like, you, you ask for them to get a little bit better. Hey, could you make that a little bit better, please? A pile of trash over there. Like, I know Bud and I start start cleaning that up. It's just going to be trashed again because people here don't have the consciousness to hold a clean place. However, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help that pile of trash get a little bit better? And then I'll make it a little bit better. And as we do that, can you help people just notice? Can you help people just see us doing it so that they start to have an appreciation for the cleanliness? Can you help people see the cleanup that is in action so that they can help? That's all I'm asking God. There's a lot of layers to that prayer. There's a lot of dimensional realities in that prayer, right? From just literally clean, can you help people see the cleaning up of trash in the physical realm to can you help people see the cleaning up that's being done in consciousness in the spiritual realm? There's a lot of, of, of asking that I just did in all of those dimensions. 
Can you just help us see a little bit more of the cleanup so that people then start to have faith? And when people have faith, they have belief. And when they have belief, they have good thoughts. And when they have good thoughts, they have good feelings. And when they have good thoughts and feelings, they are good electromagnetic attractors of more good and more abundance and they get more and more and more excited and they keep sending that out and more people keep noticing that hey you got cleaned up how'd you get cleaned up oh that's all I did so it's a beautiful beautiful life if we just do the hard work and we face the crap face the stuff I know it isn't easy it wasn't easy for me either but I'm to the point now where I'm so at peace with any crap that comes up because I'm like, oh, this is this is the next step. So let's just get through it. Let's just handle it, right? Like, what do I need to look at? What's ugly about this? Oh, okay, I'll deal with that. It's how it gets easier and easier. It doesn't go away. It doesn't become a, a world of just light and easy, you know? There's still, there's still gonna be some stuff, but. When you're at peace, the stuff doesn't matter, and it's easy. So, that's my stream of consciousness in this moment. I'm pretty grateful to be having this quiet moment. It's just quiet, peaceful. And when it's quiet and peaceful and I just sit here, there used to be a day my mind would race with all the things I should be doing and all the things I need to feel guilty for and all the things that I want to improve because I hate my life, you know? The monkey mind. Now my monkey mind is just what I call the stream of consciousness. That's the opposite side of the monkey mind. And I've been in both expressions. I've experienced both. And I will tell you, the monkey mind can have it's past. I am done with that. The only thing that's running through this brain of mine is a stream of consciousness from my angels and my guides from the heavens, helping me improve my life, helping me improve the life of my kids, and helping me improve the life for my family and for every single person in humanity. And I know that's a really big, bold statement but I, I'm pretty certain I can do that. And so can you. Thanks for being here.